Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafi al-anbiya wa al-mursalin. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Wa sallam tasliman kathiran kathira. Amma ba'du. My brothers and sisters, a dear friend of mine sent me a few questions from Perth, Australia. Maulwi Burhan Mehtar. May Allah bless him. And I think these are beautiful questions which encapsulate the biggest confusion that we have in our lives today in the modern world when we try to understand Islam and try to practice Islam. Alhamdulillah, we have people, especially the youth today, who would like to follow Islam as completely and fully as they can. Uh, but they are confused. And the confusion is between these two terms, dunya and deen. Um, so here are the questions that uh, Mali Buran sent me. I'm going to read these questions and then I'm going to try and answer them because I think this is a good opportunity to send this message across the world to all the listeners of this podcast. So that this, this uh, what I call the eternal dilemma is inshallah solved. So the first question is, in your view, what does it mean to be a Muslim in this day and age? I want you to listen to the words carefully. He's saying, in your view, what does it mean to be a Muslim in this day and age? What are some of the responsibilities and opportunities for us over the next five to ten years? Now, my answer to that is, the beauty of Islam is that the message never changes. So therefore, the phrase, this day and age, is immaterial. The message of Islam and therefore the responsibility for Muslims remains the same, irrespective of the day and the age. Opportunities, however, will, however, will differ with time and age and technology and politics and economics and so on and so forth. So what is the message of Islam? What is this universal message, the single truth of Islam, which never changes over time? It has been the same from the day Islam came into this world and it will be the same until the last Muslim walks on this planet. And that message is to spread goodness all around and to stand up against evil all around. I want to repeat that. The message of Islam is to spread goodness all around and to stand up against evil all around. Opportunities differ in how we can do that from time to time, from age to age. So ask how you can spread goodness around you and look for the way to do that given your specific location and resources and ability. This is the first time in known history, in recorded history, that entry barriers, exclusivity of knowledge, even resources have all become obsolete. Everything is available free of cost. All the knowledge in the world is available at the, on the click of a mouse. All we need is focus and industry. And that means purpose. Purpose is more important than power. Purpose without power builds resilience. Power without purpose is a bull in a china shop. So focus and industry, the willingness to work and knowing what to do. You can make progress or you can make excuses, but you can't do both. I will repeat that. You can make progress or you can make excuses, but you can't do both. So decide what you want to do. The second question was, as Muslims, we understand that the ultimate success in, is entry to Jannah. But there are other forms of success also. Success in this world, if you will. Does success in this world, such as financial, political or lifestyle success, does worldly success bring happiness? My answer is that this is the biggest fallacy and the root cause of all problems. The artificial dichotomy between dunya and akhirah. There is only one form of success and that is entry into Jannah. The first misconception therefore to remove from the mind is that there are many 
or several forms of success. There aren't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us clearly that, that there is only one definition of success. And he said, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ وُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاءُ الْغُرُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Imran, Everyone will taste death. And only on the day of resurrection will you be paid your wages in full. And whoever is removed away from the fire, and admitted into Jannah, only that person, Fakat Fas, only he is permanently and finally successful. The life of this world is only the enjoyment of deception, meaning it is a deceptive thing, it's a deceiving thing. Now, the thing to understand is that there is a goal and there is the means to reach that goal. It is like going from Dubai to New York. To reach New York is the goal. No compromise in that. But how to get there is up to us. We can take a direct flight to Emirates, or we can try to hitch a ride on a cargo vessel or get a job on a cruise liner going to New York or in that direction, hitch rides on other ships and so on. The eventual purpose is the same, to get to New York. You are not saying I have several goals to get to New York or fly on Emirates or take a job on a cargo liner or, or, or whatnot. No, you are saying the goal is only one get to New York. How you do that depends on where you are, what age, how much energy, enterprise, money, temperament, likes, dislikes and so on. And final thing in this analogy, you will experience the hardship or ease of whatever method you choose. Neither the hardship nor the ease is the reward. The reward is getting to New York. The hardship and ease are both factors of the journey. They will change with the means you adopt. So enjoy or suffer. So three things to understand in this analogy. Number one, that the goal is one. Number two, that the means can be many. And number three, each means comes with its related hardship or ease. So let's look at this. Now let's relate this to our ultimate goal. And that is to be freed from the fire and enter Jannah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this for all of us. So the first thing to understand and remember is the goal is only one. The goal remains the same irrespective of time and age and place and resources and conditions and that is to reach Jannah when we die. And that will happen by spreading goodness all around us. That is the New York in my analogy. You must get to New York, not to some other city. No compromise in that. If you didn't get, New if you didn't get to New York, you failed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, You Muslims are the best of people ever raised up for the benefit of mankind. You enjoin al-ma'ruf, you enjoin and you support everything which is good and you forbid al-munkar. You forbid and you stop and you stand, against, stand up against all evil and you believe in Allah. Rasulullah said, Khairun nas, man yanfaul nas. Nabi Sallallahu said, which means the best among you is the one who benefits people. Now this is the fundamental, never changing message of Islam for all times and all places. Islam's message never changes. Spread goodness everywhere for everyone in any situation. Point number two, the means can be many to spread this goodness. There's not necessarily one single way, many ways to spread goodness. I can choose any profession that will enable me to spread goodness. Absolutely any profession at all that enables me to spread goodness. Now to ask if I can do something which is haram in this context would be oxymoronic because Rasulullah told us that there is nothing good in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited. So any halal profession that spreads goodness, any halal activity that spreads goodness all around, will get me to Jannah. That is the Emirates or cargo ship or cruise liner or whatever in the analogy. Which is the best means? That depends on who you are, what you have access to, what you like, what you don't like and so on and so forth. All means are good if they are legal, moral and don't add calories. 
and they get you to your destination. Each means is your road to Jannah. There's no one right way. There is one right principle, which is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any way, any profession, any business or service which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the way to get to Jannah. Point number three, each means comes with its related hardship or ease. Try, try a minute's business class and you know what enjoyment is. Try working on a cargo ship and you will know what facing tough challenges and succeeding is. Get a job on a cruise liner and you will know that hard work and great food can go together. Each means comes with its own enjoyment. That is what we call success and confuse ourselves. It is not success. It is enjoyment of the journey. Success is only when you reach the destination, not before. No matter how much you enjoy the journey, the success is only at the end. The finishing line is only at the end. It's not in the middle of the race. But there is certainly nothing wrong in enjoying the journey or anything good in deliberately seeking hardship. There's nothing wrong in enjoying the journey, nor is there anything good in deliberately seeking hardship. This confusion happened because of the artificial dichotomy that got created by interpreting dunya and akhirah as two mutually exclusive things. Dunya is our location. Deen is the roadmap. It's the way we need to follow to get to our destination, which is the akhirah. The three, dunya, deen and akhirah, are intrinsically and inextricably related. You need one for the other. That is why Rasulullah said that dunya is the cultivation for the akhirah. He said that dunya, mazraul akhirah. The dunya is the cultivation. The akhirah is the harvest. How can you get a harvest without cultivating your fields? How can you get Jannah without working for it in this life? The dunya is attractive. Allah made it attractive, but called it mata or gurur, deceptive. It is intriguing, it involves you, it sucks you in and makes you forget your destination, your goal. Imagine you are flying from Sydney to Makkah on Singapore Airlines. The first stop will be Changi Airport in Singapore, which is one of the best airports in the world. Full of delightful restaurants, uh, rainforest, a slice of rainforest, uh, shopping, the waterfall, uh, beautiful lounges and so on. Now, what would you say to someone who was with you on your flight and was getting distracted with all the attractions of Changi? You would say, Keep your eye on the departure sign. Don't get lost in Changi. We need to catch our collect connecting flight to Makkah. No matter how nice Changi is, this is only an interim stop. The final destination is Makkah. That is what we need to do with the dunya. Keep an eye on the, des on the departure sign with the difference that in this case, there is no signage. So be prepared to depart at any time. It would be silly to say, don't go to Changi. Because that is not in your, that's not your choice. You are already there. But you have a choice about what to do when you are in Changi. Enjoy it. But remember, that you are not there to stay. It's only a transit halt. You must board your flight. And that's why Rasulullah said, Kun fi dunya ka anna ka gharib. He said, stay in this dunya like a stranger or like a traveler. And the question, the uh, next question here I was asked is, he said, this will sound like a silly question, but I am exaggerating the point to highlight the key issue. Are we not better off reading the Quran 24-7 instead of studying for university or going to work? Now, my answer is you could read the Quran 24-7. It's not haram. But it's not the sunnah. Rasulullah didn't do it. The Sahaba didn't do it. None of the Salaf Salihin did it. Other Anbiya didn't sit reading the divine books that were revealed to them. Musa a. was a huge activist and a warrior who worked to free his people from slavery and then to strengthen them materially and spiritually. Ibrahim a.s. traveled the world and he built the Kaaba. Yusuf a.s. ran Egypt as its vicegerent. Suleiman a.s. ruled a kingdom the like of which was never seen. Dawud a.s. made chainmail armor even though he was a king. Find me the Nabi who sat and read his book 24-7. So why would you? The Quran came to teach us how to live in the world. It didn't come to be read 24-7. The books came to teach us how to live, with, how to live this life. They are workbooks. They are field books. They are my instruction manuals. They are not relics to be recited and studied and put aside. Or story books or books of poetry to be read for enjoyment and entertainment. They are books of instructions to be implemented in our lives so that we may succeed in this life and the next. You read, then you apply. That is what we know from how Rasulullah taught the Sahaba. 
We know the story of Abdullah ibn Umar anhu, who took 12 years to memorize Surah Al-Baqarah. What did he say when they asked him why it took him so long? He said, we would go to Rasulullah we would take 10 ayat from him, memorize them, understand them, seek clarification if necessary, act on them, and only when we were satisfied with this would we go for the next 10. Did the Sahaba sit around reading the Quran or did they live by the Quran? Why would you want to do something that they didn't do? The next question I was asked is, an attitude that exists in our community is, I am a minority in Australia. I am only one person. Therefore, I am too insignificant to make an impact on society. What does Allah say about this? My answer is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that He will question us singly, individually, without any reference to anyone else. So who cares if we are a minority or a majority? Our questioning before Allah is for us alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to live by Islam. He told us to enter Islam fully and He warned us against partial and selective obedience. He didn't tell us that He would hold us accountable for who we influence or convince or for the impact we make or fail to make. He told us to do our job, to fulfill the purpose of our existence. Our job is to show up, impact or no impact. Nuh alayhi salam preached for 950 years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us this number. How many people accepted Islam? He was a minority of one. Was his life a success or a failure? Rasulullah preached Islam for 13 years in Mecca and we know that 13 now at the time when he was there in Mecca during that period he didn't know, people didn't know that it's going to be 13 years. So he preached Islam for 13 years in Mecca and not even 200 people were convinced. So was that a success story or a failure? Rasulullah went to Taif and we know what happened. Was that a success story or not? This depends on, on what you look at. If you check to see whether he did what he was entrusted with to the best of his ability, without being concerned about how it turns out. It was a total success. If you look at who was convinced, it may look like a failure. <clears throat> but how do you judge something or someone? Based on whether they did what they were entrusted to do or something else. Whatever you may like to answer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِجَبَّارٍ فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we know best what they say. <coughs> and you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are not a tyrant over them. We have not sent you to force them to believe. But warn them by the Quran. By, but warn by the Quran, the one who fears the wa'id, who fears the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now these attitudes of saying, oh, but you see, I'm only one and I'm too small and so on. All of these are misguidance of shaitan. They prevent us from doing our job. All that we need to ensure is that we do our job sincerely and consistently. That is all. As for impact, it is the natural result of doing something sincerely and consistently. Impact will happen. It must happen. But only if we work sincerely and consistently. So, Focus on what you can do and what you must do and forget everything else. Today, the curse is social media, which we have enslaved ourselves to. We want everything to be out there, visible, attracting likes and thumbs up signs and flies and whatnot. That is the surest way to ensure that on the day of judgment, your book of accounts will be empty because you did good work for name and fame and not for the pleasure of Allah. Let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judge the impact of your work and reward you for it in keeping with His majesty and great grace. Do what you know you should do sincerely and consistently, starting with praying five times a day in the masjid. That is the measure of sincerity and, and consistency. That is the measure of impact. My motto is, I will not allow what is not in my control to prevent me from doing what is in my control. Minority and majority are meaningless. What matters is what you do, not how many you are. The final question was, we can see that the Quran provides great guidance for us. But as a regular person who doesn't understand Arabic, I have two options to understand what Allah is saying. Go to internet videos or a translated Quran. What are the pros and cons of this? Now my answer, this, my answer to this is, what is this term? A regular person who doesn't understand the Quran, doesn't understand Arabic. That means all Arabs are not regular. They are irregular people. 
Uh, anyone who understands Arabic is not a regular person. You also didn't understand English either. What did you do? You learned English. You didn't understand your mother tongue. You didn't come out from your from the womb of your mother speaking your mother tongue. You came out and speaking nothing and you learned it. So why is learning Arabic not an option? That is actually the first and best option. Learn Arabic. So rephrase your statement. But as a regular person who doesn't understand Arabic, I have three options. Learn Arabic, read translations, or watch videos about the Quran. Choose the first option. Until you get there, do any of the others. But your goal is to learn Arabic. Last question I was asked is, what message can you leave for those who are seeking success and happiness by the Quran? Very simple. Live by the Quran. Study the Quran. Study the seerah because it is the tafsir of the Quran. And then live by that. Live by Islam. Live by seerah. Not talk about it. Not show others. And above all, not make excuses. Live Islam because that is what gives us success in this life, which leads to Jannah in the Akhirah. Jazakumullah khairan. I hope I have been clear on this. There is no contradiction in this whole matter. The dunya is where we are. The Akhirah, meaning Jannah, is where we want to go. And Deen Islam is the roadmap. It is how we need to live in this dunya in order to get Jannah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa